Choosing the right domain name for your SEO campaign is so important that it can sometimes kick up quite a bit of confusion or uncertainty about what domain name you should register, especially if your keyword.com domain name is already taken. So in this section, we're going to go a little bit more in depth on how keywords relate to domain names. And we'll also cover domain name categorization. So we're going to cover domain extensions, which is also known as domain categorization, which is just the bit on the end of the domain name, which is the .com, the .org, the .net, or the .com.au if you're in Australia, for example. We're going to cover also hyphens, how hyphens can be used in domain names. We'll cover keyword density in domain names. This is the percentage of the keyword that's in the actual domain name. And we'll also cover prefixes and suffixes in domain names. Also known as categorization, the domain extension depends what category the domain falls into. The first level categorization of domain names are top level domains, also known as TLDs, including generic top level domains, GTLDs, such as .com, .net, .org, and .info, and .biz, etc. Also falling under TLDs are CC TLDs, which stands for Country Code Top Level Domains, which are country specific domains like .ca for Canada, .co.uk for the UK, .com.au for Australia, and so on. Below these top level domains on the domain name system, also known as the DNS, are the second level and third level domain names. We're going to concentrate primarily on GTLDs, so .coms, .orgs, and .nets, etc., or CCTLDs if your niche is country specific. All other things being equal, .com domains will always hold the greatest value. And although Google claim that the extension has no SEO advantage or disadvantage with TLDs, countless different SEO experts claim that .coms in their experience have the SEO edge. And with .coms being the most sought after domain extension, there's always a certain amount of kudos in holding a .com. So this will definitely work in your favor if you're looking to build a brand identity. After that, there's some debate as to whether .nets or .orgs have the edge on each other, but personally for me, I've had better SEO experiences with .orgs. Although you should also consider what you're using the domain for, because some people still see .orgs as kind of public sector or charity style domains, so this could either work for you or against you depending on your niche. Dot infos and dot bizzes would follow next, but again, there's, there's loads of debates all over the internet over which performs better. Some people like dot infos because they're meant to be informational sites, and if you're selling information, this may work pretty well for you. Although dot infos have always been very cheap and have therefore been used widely by spammers, so they do carry this kind of association with them. Now, if your niche is country specific, then you should consider registering the appropriate CC TLD. So, for example, if you're focused in the UK, sorry if I keep going on about the UK, it's probably because I'm from the UK, but if, if you focused on the UK, then you should definitely try and go for the keyword.co.uk, or if you're in Canada, for example, keyword.ca, and have this as your primary domain for SEO purposes. The good thing about these country specific TLDs, these CC TLDs, is that they're pretty easy to acquire as well. So um, getting them is, is a lot easier than going for these TLDs in most cases anyway. And also it allows the Google bots to know what country you're looking to rank in. Another highly debated issue among SEOs is using hyphens in a domain. For example, using key-phrase.com. So if you're in um, car hire, for example, it would be car-hire.com. Very highly debated among SEO experts. And if you think about it, putting a hyphen in a domain name is going to make it harder to remember. So in turn, this is going to make it much less brandable. 
hyphens create quite a few debates actually and uh, another debate is whether one hyphen is okay and whether two hyphens is too much but there's generally a rule of thumb amongst the SEO community and that's that more than one hyphen is going to appear spammy both to the search engines and the human eye so it's generally okay to have one hyphen in there um, is the general consensus amongst the majority of the SEO community as well. I have to be careful here because um, Google haven't come out and kind of said that um, they, you know, they're de going to discriminate against hyphens or one hyphen or two hyphens. So the general consensus is one hyphen is okay. Okay, let's talk about keyword density. By keyword density, I mean what percentage of the domain name before its extension, so the bit before the .com or the .org, is the actual keyword versus what percentage isn't. For example, if your main keyword that you're targeting was washers, because you happen to sell washers, then washers.com has a keyword density of 100% because there's no other letters in there, numbers in there, words, or symbols in there. Topwashers.com, for example, has a 70% keyword density because seven out of the actual 10 letters includes the keyword, whereas three of the 10 letters don't include the keyword. So those three letters are 30% non-keyword related. I prefer domains that have as much keyword density as possible because in my experience, the lower the keyword density, the more polluted the domain name. And finally, let's look at prefixes and suffixes. When we talk about prefixes within a domain, we mean the word before the keyword. So for example, mykeyword.com, my is the prefix. For a suffix, it's the word after the keyword, so keywordonline.com, so the suffix is the word online. There's quite a number of common uh, generic prefixes such as mykeyword.com, yourkeyword.com and bykeyword.com or .net or .org or .co.uk for example. And there's also some common generic suffixes like um, keywordblog.com, keywordonline.com, keywordreviews.com, and so on. These are all good choices if they're kind of suitable for the keyword in question. So what I mean by that is that it looks reasonable to the human eye. Or it's a good choice if the non-keyword actually turns the keyword into a key phrase. So what I mean by that is if you were to have buywashers.com, then the non-keyword buy would actually turn it into a key phrase that people are searching, which would be buy washers. And it's also a fair choice if the keyword dot extension is not available. So the keyword dot com or the keyword dot net or the keyword dot ca if you're in Canada and so on. Again, the debate moves on because a lot of people say you should use suffixes over prefixes where possible because um, this allows the search engines to see the keyword first before the actual other word. But again, this is debatable uh, and it's up for consideration because it would all depend on you know what the suffix is or what the prefix is because you know if it's if it's a blog then great, um, but if you're using the word buy before something, for example, as a prefix, then, you know, that's that's a could be a really good search term, and it could also be a very good converter, because if people are actually typing in buy and then your keyword, then um, it's going to have a much better conversion rate once they actually do come to your site. So the main thing you should look at really is, does the domain you know, fit the usage. So, we've covered in this section extensions, so that's .com, .org, .net, .co.uk. Um, we've also covered hyphenated domains. We've covered keyword density in domains. 
And we've also covered prefixes and suffixes in domains. It may surprise you how much there is to consider when choosing a domain name, and it's probably one of the reasons many seasoned internet marketers tend to register multiple domains in their chosen niches. It does help you prevent your competition from acquiring them and it can also allow you to have them for yourself so that you can develop them and then dominate your niche.